I have 180 days to turn them into revolutionaries. How do you do that? How do you scare the fuck out of them? Yeah. Sacramento organization that is under the banner of Antifa is, is very loosely organized, right? Um, so that like, yeah, when when there is like right wing rallies and stuff, then we like she will create an opposition to that. Yeah. Beautiful. Where would he go to connect to some of these organizations? Like, no, I, I post calendar oh, every okay, week. Awesome. And then so like they, it's and I do it for extra credit, so they get points for doing it. Like, and, so that encourages them to do it. <laughs> and I've I've had like students show for like protests, community events, you know, tabling, food distribution, all sorts of sorts of things. They when they go, they take pictures, they write up a reflection. That's their extra credit. Like I, I have an Antifa flag on my on my wall. Um, and a student complained about that, and he said it made him feel uncomfortable. Well, this is meant to make fascists feel uncomfortable, so if you feel uncomfortable, I, I don't really know what to tell you. <laughs> like, maybe you shouldn't be aligning with the, the values that it, this is antithetical to. So, the Cultural Revolution in the 60s was fixing the problem that came about after the economic one. It ultimately failed, right? Um, and there was a lot of excesses. People were definitely, like, you know, shot in the streets that probably shouldn't have been. Incredibly ugly behavior come out of this city. And you can see a couple of people over there that might be demonstrating that. I have 180 days to turn them into revolutionaries. How do you do that? How do you scare the fuck out of them? Meet Gabriel Geip. He's a public school teacher paid for by taxpayer dollars at Intercom High School in Sacramento, California. Geip, who teaches advanced placement government classes, is not shy about his involvement in Antifa's local chapter. He even has an Antifa flag and a poster of Mao Zedong in his classroom. So, um, you know, it's like, my wife and I have been political organizers. I've been organizing since I was 13. Wow. And, and I've been in a ton of different organizations. Um, and I've, I've, you know, I've been on the front lines and I've taken a step back and gone back and forth. And, and my wife is in the same way. Um, is there a local Antifa or chapter? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, the, the Sacramento organization that is under the banner of Antifa is, is very loosely organized, right? Um, and like we, we have no official like member yeah, yeah, list, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so that like, yeah, when when there is like right wing rallies and stuff, then we like she will create an opposition to that. Absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so and and Sacramento. Uh, you know, as as the city itself is, is incredibly diverse, but um, we're surrounded so by I, a bunch of right wing rednecks. And then um, the other really big organization in our area that, uh, ab if you're looking to get involved, is um, NorCal Resist. Uh -huh. Um, NorCal Resist does uh, direct outreach um, for like undocumented folks. Um, they help them with like material support as well as legal aid and support with the help of uh, National Lawyers Guild. Um, so they work in tandem with each other. So that's why I do like political efficacy events because I want to get them out in the community. I want to get them familiar with organizations that are doing work, what type of work they're doing, how they can be involved, yeah. where their passion is, and what they can contribute. Because it's yeah. like every single one of us can do something. Yeah. I'm not asking you to all be on the front lines but I am asking you to be involved and yeah. it is so much more than just sharing a tweet or posting on Instagram. Guype seems eager to get his students actively participating at radical activist political events. But he takes it one step further by motivating them through extra credit in exchange for their attendance. People that are interested are there flyers or something? No, I, I post calendar oh, every okay, week. Awesome. Yeah, so for, the, for the organizations that you mentioned, yep. so they get yep. that's yeah. dope. Man. And then dope. so like they, it's and I do it for extra credit, so they get points for doing it. Like yeah. and so that encourages them to do it. Because <laughs> like, I, I can't just like hey here's some things going. they'll never go yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and I've I've had like students show up for like protests, community events, you know, tabling, food distribution, all sorts sorts of, sorts of things. So I I since I work with PSL and PSL has connections with a bunch of other organizations um, and also like Sacramento Peace Action which is like a very old organization that posts the calendar on their website every month of all the events that are going on and I just put them on my whiteboard let them know where they are they when they go they take pictures they write up a reflection that's their extra credit. If you look at these photos from Guype's classroom you can see he has an Antifa flag as well as a poster of Mao Zedong, the Chinese dictator who is one of the most notoriously brutal leaders in history responsible for the death of millions. Uh, I, I probably uh, as, as far left as you can go. <laughs> so like um, I've gone down those deep dark rabbit holes where like the idea of like adventurism and just being like why aren't people just like 
taking up arms. Like, why? And, you know, we have historical take, take taking up arms like, yeah. against the state. Like, it, And we have historical examples of that happening and them getting crushed and being martyrs for a cause. And it's like, okay, well, it's, it's slow going because it takes massive amounts of organization. Geip's radical philosophy is prominent in the teaching in his own classroom. Geip goes on to say he's not the only teacher at Intercom High School who shares his radical beliefs. Oh, yeah, because a lot of a lot of senior parents at this point have backed off, yeah, right? Yeah. So they're just kind of like, well, you can fend for yourself. You know, I know um, other people in my department who teach like tenth graders who who've had like parent meetings, like some you know a student who complained about like a pride flag and something they felt uncomfortable. I've had students, you know, during anonymous surveys at the end of the year, comment about the things that I have in my classroom. Like I, I have an Antifa flag on my on my wall, um, and a student complained about that, and he said it made him feel uncomfortable, and I had to, I addressed it to every because I didn't know who it was. And I was like, well, this is meant to make fascists feel uncomfortable. So if you feel uncomfortable, I, I don't really know what to tell you. <laughs> like, maybe you shouldn't be aligning with the, the values that it, this is antithetical to. Yeah. We're distracted, bro. Yeah. And it's, it's hard, it's hard not to. That's why I was asking you make them revolutionaries. They've got TikTok, they've got right. Instagram, they've got this. And well, that's just it. It's like, utilize that propaganda, yeah. right? Like, these are all great tools on how to get, you know, it's like, I've, I've met so many people people in my life who when they met me thought I was like off the wall mm. right and now they're all Marxists right you know and I'm just like your your political identification changed and I so I have a huge political spectrum in my room on the wall so they take an ideology quiz and, and they're unit four and I put their face or they have to give me a picture of themselves and I put it on the wall where they are every year they get further and further left and, and I've, I've made them pay attention to where my tack marks are because yeah. I'm like, these ideologies are considered extremes, right? Extreme times breed extreme ideologies, right? There is a reason why Generation Z, these kids, are, are becoming further and further left. Give you, are there a lot you, of teachers like you? <laughs> I think there are more than there used to be. Um, and I, I think that, uh, like, there's three other teachers in my department that I did my credential program with, and they're rad. They're great people, um, and they're definitely like on the same page. So, what do you think of, of China, though? Have you so, been? Have you been? I, am, I have not. I'm actually going in April. Okay, I'm cool. Super I wanted to go to just go. to see it because yeah. I hear conflicting things. Yeah, and... um, I think uh, it, it's. Yeah. One, <laughs> I mean, there, some of it was, there was a, you know, like the, the revolution that happened in, in 1949 with like Mao and like yeah. the Chinese Communist yeah. Party, right? And then like the Cultural Revolution that happened in the 60s to the 70s up until like Mao's death and then Deng coming in and like opening up to capitalist, you know, kind of investment and, and creating the road that they're currently on. Um, and then like what Xi Jinping is attempting to do now, kind of like going back to more the Maoist understanding of socialism. So you need a two-pronged system, which is exactly what Huey Newton and Fred Hampton understood, was that you needed propaganda of the deed, the economic, and also prop cultural propaganda as well. You needed to re retrain the way that people think. So the Cultural Revolution in the 60s was fixing the problem that came about after the economic one, right? It was like, well, what can we do now to root out this culture that keeps perpetuating hyper individual Individualism, hyper competitiveness, um, you know, capitalist exploitation and consolidation of wealth. It ultimately failed, right? Um, and there was a lot of excesses. People were definitely like, you know, shot in the streets that probably shouldn't have been. Um, but I do think that it's it's important to understand that as an extension of an economic revolution. They they were changing the base, and then they went to change the superstructure. Um, and and you cannot change one without the other. You can't have cultural shifts without the economic shift and, and vice versa. So I think that for movements in the United States, um, that we need to be able to attack both fronts. Right? We need to create parallel structures of power because we cannot rely on the state. So we need to distribute food, necessities, we need to create those mutual aid programs that we can look back at, at groups like the Panthers and, and learn from their their successes as well as their mistakes, as well as consistently focusing on education and a change of cultural propaganda. Because it's like we have to hit both fronts. We have to convince people that this is what we actually need. Guy believes it's okay to enforce his radical political agenda on his students. This tip came to us from someone 
on the inside of Gype School and was corroborated by a Project Veritas undercover journalist. Contact us and send us a tip at veritastips at protonmail.com.